I'm running off vibes today. <laughs> That's all England run on, so fuck it. Or they don't run when they just leave their crease. Um <laughs> Right, yeah. Let, let's let's just go. Let's have let's have fun. Let's have a that's, nice, friendly podcast. That's the opening. That's the goal. It is. I know. <laughs> I knew as soon as the record was going, I knew we were off. Um, but hi, hello, welcome to our third test review. We've done Edgerton, we've done Trent Bridge, now we're doing Lords. Um, we're reviewing another Australia win. <laughs> this is fun. Um. Yeah, how are you, Jamie? Even though I've seen you most of the duration of this test match, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. how are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm good. Um, we are going to talk about Lords in a sec, but we are going to start off with the breaking news of the day, which I guess we'll somewhat talk about Lords within. Uh, but Ollie Pope is now being the latest person to be ruled out of the Ashes. Um, going uh following a uh, shoulder dislocation um he actually has to undergo surgery which is what i i didn't foresee at all um they injured it on the morning of the second te- first day of the second test i think it was i'm pretty sure it was the first day um but then he had he came, had to come out to field on the third day which where we were um and then he caused further injury to it i wasn't aware of at the time because we actually spoke whilst we were in said stands um going on about why is he fielding what's what is he doing out there what's the point uh, apparently he had to uh otherwise um england would have had to come out with uh 10 men um i'll find you what the umpires did say um that's weird because all the noise was otherwise that because it was the type of injury it was, he would be fine just batting at three. So, yeah. Um, uh, obviously, a load of ball then. Yeah, it's it's true. So um, from Crick Info, uh, so Pope aggravated the injury on day three, uh, as we saw live, um, after the umpires insisted he took the field after batting in England's first innings after he scored 42. Um, it was a situation that left England feeling frustrated. Um acknowledging that England would have had to field a 10 men had he not fronted up. It, it, that just seems stupid. I don't understand. I, I don't really understand what the rules of... Cricket injury rules are weird to me. I don't... Wait, so that's fielding with 10 men. They couldn't have... Yeah, a... yeah no. But he would have been able to men. come in and bat at three. Apparently. And maybe that would have only been first innings or second innings. I don't, I don't know whether because of the injury it was in the first innings. And it, I don't know. I don't really understand why he just have a... He's obviously done his shoulder. Let him have a sub field that, like, you're you're so basically you're waiting for him to injure himself again before you can allow another injury. I don't. I don't. I. Mm. I mean, it's not as if Australia didn't have eleven fielders. When yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't understand. Yeah. So uh, yeah, apparently that was the thing. So I vividly remember us talking about it being why on earth is he out there? He's just going to cause himself an injury, and then I think the next ball he then caused himself the injury. Um. So I don't think it makes any sense to me, but. Happy day. Um, so yeah, he's out of the entire series. I thought it might only just be a test, and I thought it'd just be we'll just do a stopgap of Dan Lawrence in at three for the heading the game, but he's out for the series. Um, so before we get into Lord's chat, um, how would you front up for that in the next game? Is it just there's only Dan Lawrence in the squad as a spare batter? Well, um, from what I've seen, they've said they're not calling anyone up. No. So they're not doing the sensible decision of bringing folks into the team and having yeah. a proper keeper to prevent like i don't know 38 <laughs> extras in an inning um uh-huh i mean i used to have brooke bring in folks brooke three bring in folks just sort out the glaring issue that england had in this the stability mm. um but it's good it's they're not gonna be do lawrence it's just gonna be boring yeah crap and average and it'll... they go uh, yeah. lots and it's 3-0 I'm yeah. all optimism <laughs> is gone I was shaken after Australia won the mm. test championship and like I was very close to saying 3-1 to them but my yeah. hat went 3-1 England but yeah Lawrence in it's a hell 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, the other way they can go is by playing an extra bowler, I guess, potentially, and then they can, I don't know, it like have, but then you'd have to have Root or Brook at three, and then it pushes up one, but then you have some like Mo at seven, which is, I don't think, great. Um, so it'll be Lawrence. Um, I imagine he'll go straight in at three. I can't think they'll do anything too funky otherwise. Um, I mean, I, I would say batting wise, I don't think it's series defining because I don't think Pope's had a terrific series. He's had good starts, but just the way he's been dismissed is just kind of so, so Ollie Pope in that he's fidgeting a lot. He's getting over the ball a lot. Always the, the way he got out in the second innings of the Lords game to Stark, although it was a great delivery, it's swung in loads. The, the head position of him was just completely so far over. He wasn't in the position to play shot in the same way he was out York in the Edgerton test. Um, obviously, Pope is a player of loads of potential, but I don't know whether we've quite seen that really yet at international level. So Lawrence could come in and have a stormer, but I, I would agree. I thought folks would have been bringing the cover, get the team back to kind of settled nature. Um, puts on like Bairstow or Brook at three. Um, I don't think it's going to make any difference I, I would kind of agree in terms of the series score line it does just feel like Australia are the better team that's that's it Australia are good um they've got everyone kind of most of their team in form and the most important players in form such as Quadra or Cummins and start coming in and having a great game um I think I said so, to you when we were there day three like yeah. if you go through one to eleven and pick out each player yeah I reckon England get three players in that combined 11 maybe yeah it's i, I mean root and stokes it's that because anderson's been poor average yeah. at best yeah yeah for me it's root and stokes i can't i don't i don't think any of the bowlers get in um batting wise duckett's had duckett had a very good we'll get into lord's chat <laughs> right so the second test at lords which australia won by 43 runs so we got to go way these test map these test matches feel like they go on for about four months like <laughs> i can't believe this is only last week um so day one <laughs> uh england won the toss and elected to bowl under a very cloudy rainy gray cold um north london sky um bit of green on the pitch um that Australia still managed to mass 416 all out, um, kind of only made respectable by Root getting a couple of wickets at the end, which kind of says it all. Um, so uh, Smith top scored of 110 um, on the Lords on the board, on his board, you'd probably imagine for the last time. Um, uh, Travis Head got a cut, you know, usual blitzing 77. Uh, Warner got a cut, pretty vital 66. Uh, he was dropped, which we'll get to. Um, but then England did manage to kind of bundle them out the the um the next morning, which it could have been a lot worse. So four hundred sixty went all out, but on that pitch, not good to have conceded four sixteen. Would you agree? I mean, if I think throughout the match, whenever the conditions were in England's favour, or rather like against Australia, Australia yeah. stepped up and performed. Yeah. Whereas England, who were expected. Who had the best bowl, of conditions? Yeah, to bowl well under cloud cover with two of the best spin bowlers in the history of the game. Yeah, on Lords with the slope. Yeah, didn't show up. Like you were, like Tongue got the three most important wickets. Yeah, great game. First genuine proper real test match. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, I, yeah, he bowled really well. To, like you can't have half of your wicket be root and a new bowler. Like there's no seniority taking, yeah, and like yeah, yeah. Anderson has come out and said today in one of his columns, which every writes for, to say that he doesn't think he's bowled as poorly as he has done these first two tests, um, which is kind of some refreshing honesty, I guess, from a team to say like he, he accepts he's not been good enough. Um, but I would say that the first session in the did bowl well, um, as you'd expect to in those conditions. You know, there was a lot of player misses, there was drop catches. Uh, from Root and Pope, um, Warner would have gone quite cheap. But it could. It was one of those days. It could have very easily have been thirty for four um, if the edges had gone slightly their way. But it didn't, and I don't think they responded well to almost expecting to roll up and just get the wickets handed to them. And it did. It did. They didn't come. 
And then that kind of afternoon session, I think they just really let things slip um, and they got 4.16. Um, they'll be happy with how they finish off innings, but like, like you say, when, when you're relying on Root to burgle two wickets at the end of the day um, and Josh Tung um, playing his first proper test play, <laughs> um, to get three, it, it does say it all. Um, but I do think Josh Tung bowled well. I thought he did really good yeah, um, throughout really the game. Happened, yeah, yeah um, I imagine he's going to keep his place for Headingley. Um, he looked... I, I wouldn't hold my breath. I have <laughs> no idea of this England selection. Panel. I mean, yeah. He's played well. Robinson was a bit shit, but got wicket. Yeah. It, it's probably tongue out Wood in. Because that's if just how it's wrong. Yeah. If Wood is fit. I, I, my person, I, my preference, I think this is preview chat, but I would like to see kind of wood and tongue play if the pitches are just going to be like this throughout the series. I think you need that point of difference. If you look at Australia, you've got Cummins and Stark, who can bowl upwards of late 80s into 90s. England have got one player who can do that. Um, Ollie Robinson is good when his conditions are suitable, I think, if he's going at 78 miles now, but if he need, he's going to get more wickets and be more threatening, he's got to you know, not be 78 miles an hour on these kind of pitches because he's been easier to play. He's got, I think he's a second leading wicket taker in the series, but it just doesn't feel like he's been at his best. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, credit Australia. Obviously, Smith is a great, I mean, that's just that. That's just that. He is a great of the game. Of course, he's going to get his runs at some point. You miss out Edgerston, and that's more England's fault for not capitalising on that. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I've not got much else to say from the first innings from an England perspective, other than 38 extras. When you lose a game by what was by it, 43 runs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you're conceding 12 no balls. extras, and we'll get to the next, the third inning, I yeah. 36 <laughs> extras in that one. Yeah. I wonder what the game was lost. <laughs> um, you, you're going to, yeah, leg buys and stuff can happen anywhere. Like, that's going to scuffle off anything. And buys sometimes, those, you know, are impossible takes for the keeper. Um, but 12 no balls is just completely inexcusable. Like, Robinson bowled six. Like I counted his... seven. And I think Stokes got five as well. Which in the game? Captain, eight yeah. in innings. Oh, okay. I got three in this innings and six, but who knows? One of us is lying. <laughs> I, like, maybe I miscounted. Who but knows? But yeah, it's, but it's a like lot. Like, Stokes' first over had at least two no yeah, balls. Yeah, that was That's rusty as hell. That an example as captain. Yeah, I think, I think when you so, need it. Other than, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but other than <laughs> a certain thing Stokes did, I think his yeah. consistency this game was a bit off, a bit wanting. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, we will we'll get into captain chat, I imagine. Um, but I think there was less of the funky fields and whatever you'd seen yeah. at Edgerton in this game. It was almost, and like I said, I think they rolled up. It's overcast. We'll just skittle them out for hundred, mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. Then it's sort of like, oh, <laughs> I don't know what to do now. Um, rather whilst Edgerson where he was constantly proactive and I, I don't really sense he was in that first innings but okay, he's had an off day captain's going to have an off day um, but he's just about how you respond um, England batted next shock um, so uh, England were 325 all out we were lucky enough I say lucky to see the second half of this inning um, started very well at one point they were 188 for one uh, runs for Crawley, Duckett and Pope uh, Crawley got 48 uh, Duckett 98 just missing out on uh, second Lord's 100 and uh, Pope 42 um, just going through those quickly from an England perspective um, I think that Crawley has had a good series but I think you need him to do better I mean everyone's always out to get Crawley but it, it's significantly the chat about Crawley has been much quieter considering he's I think been scoring runs ish like he looked he's looked good at the top of the order but he is missing that kawaja esque innings you know he needs he needs a big score like it's all well and good getting a very pretty 50 um which he is very capable of doing every game and he helps really set the tone at the top of the innings and he has done it throughout this series um but he needs to go on that's just that's just that like he's not remember... very clinical like he'll yeah. get a start or he'll get a 50 but he won't convert yeah, exactly. Um, but I think otherwise he's he's looked in form and he's looked good this series. And I think he's, you know, look, looked like one of the more solid bats from this team, which is concerning. Um, you've got uh, uh, Duckett, 98, 
who played very well. Um, he did get hooked out at the end of kind of pressures building towards the end, but um, good score for Duckett the bucket. Or do you want to talk about Duckett in the second innings after he's had more runs? No, I mean, I I missed most of this innings, yeah. like travelling and walking. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I'm disappointed he didn't get his 100, obviously. Yeah. He seemed to be playing well. He deserved it. Great. He really, yeah. yeah. Like, it, this is the sort of opener that I think this England team wants to have. And he's playing in the way that we want him to play. Yeah. I think he just tries to get back on board a bit too much and hasn't yeah. worked out that this is test cricket and you can leave <laughs> balls sometimes. I know. The both balls he got out to in this game were very easy, could have just stuck away. Um but duck it's the most it's, 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 it's yeah, duck it away. It's the most awkward, like kind of frustrating slash you can understand it thing because he's getting these runs by playing the way he does. And if you're saying to him, well stop playing that way, is he going to be as um productive with his run scoring if he's not playing at all these deliveries? Um I don't know. It's, it's a tricky one. I mean, it's, I think it's gonna get into what's gonna happen in our next chat and how England were skittled from 188 for one to 325 or out from the barrier barrage barrage of short pitch bowling from Australia. The first time you saw this kind of ploy in this game. Um. Uh, so yeah. So I think most notably for me, it was that evening where you had Duckett, Pope, Root, um, and. Um, was it? I, yeah, it was that evening. It was Duckett, Pope, and Root who all fell to the yeah. short ball um, on the boundary. Um, and then it's next morning that that all continued. So, yeah, that evening where they obviously the main thing which we've not talked about really is that Lyon was injured, mm-hmm. um, kind of innocuously, but he's torn his calf, I believe it is, um, out for the series as well. Um, and at that stage, that was a you know huge opportunity for England. You'd say like you, you've lost, they've lost their premier spinner, one of their best bowlers. He's been played. Oh, it was it was his hundredth test in a row, wasn't it? Um, you know, and someone who can easily bowl Australia to a victory, no problem. Um, and to lose him so early almost forced Australia into the tactic of well, we'll just do short stuff um, constantly. Um, and then England just completely fell into it. Um, which was a bit nuts. Um, how would you assess the kind of the short stuff from England and how they dealt with it? Or the short stuff from Australia and how they dealt with it? I mean, again, I missed most of that travelling down on the train to see the turgid day three that we saw. But, I mean, it worked. It was effective for them. Like, you're, probably your best ball has gone off. You need to find a tactic to prevent the run flow they did, and they stopped the most threatening batsmen in the innings getting 100. They stopped the actual, literal best test match batsmen getting too many runs. They found a tactic and it worked. Like, definitely. It's more than you can say for when England have been trying to find wickets and prevent runs. Yeah, no, absolutely. Which um, is a low bar, sure, but I think sure. it really did actually <laughs> really well. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of chat about how poorly they had played it overnight before obviously we went to day three. Um, We'll get into how Australia faced it in the other innings later on. But um, yeah, the the next morning was not good. (laughs) It felt very old England. It felt like very much all the other games I've been to recently where England just collapse. Um, Stokes was out first ball. He faced the day. Uh, Brooke was out for 50, playing a really weird skewered shot to kind of three quarters to cover cover i think it was um i mean broad hung around a bit robinson hung around a bit but it was just it, there wasn't really anything there but played a poor shot where he just looped up to mid on it just obviously they had such a good opportunity there with no lion you're only on day two or day three well, you're still, on day three you're still in the first innings you've got a real chance to kind of bat australia out of the game um and the pressure is on them with no spinner in the fourth innings um, and even if it was just getting, you know, an extra up to parity, you know, uh, th- that obviously would make a huge difference in context of the game. I think that's the minimum they should be focusing on. But th- that morning is, for me, 100% where they lost the game, not due to any blowing controversy or stuff. This That was where the game was lost, I think. Well, yeah, like, Brooke got his 50. 
in that bit before he got out and then just lost his head really um i think i was saying on the day i can't work out why stokes wasn't at least having a few knockdowns because yeah. that was such a crap yeah. shot first of all it just didn't look like he had any it's like he had rhythm or, like yeah you just need to warm up a bit and i don't i think throughout this game england just didn't look focused or ready or like had any eye for detail yeah and i, I yeah. think that was perfectly summed up by stokes's dismissal in this inning yeah. first goal of the morning just a bit of a crap shot whereas yeah no conviction really was it it was just sort exactly. of just hanged about um it just it just set the tone for the day really yeah. um so yeah, I mean, it in sets terms the of... tone even harder when it's the captain as well. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, he's meant to be leading you to yeah. a somewhat respectable score for sure. And considering how well he had played the night before to get through to close when Australia were just barraging everyone, and then considering how well he batted day five, it's just frustrating that it was just a kind of almost a moment of lapse, just not really thinking and just sort of just hanging back out there. But it is what it is. Um, we saw Josh Tong's first run, so that's all the mess. Um, but yeah, uh, in terms of wickets, they were shared around Australia. Stark got three, Cummins got one, Hazelwood two, uh, Lyon one, obviously before he went off injured, uh, Cameron Green one, and Travis Head got two cheap ones at the end. Um, but yeah, I, I thought Stark was a great selection for this test. Um, I did say that from the beginning, that it's, you it kind of refer him on these kind of flatter wickets, that he offers you something more, he offers that pace, that kind of inducker. He goes to runs, sure, but he gets wickets, and that's you know what you need. Um, but yeah, I am uh, just a quick note on Nathan Lyon. I, Lyon. I am pretty gutted that he's out of it. Um, just I think he's a decent guy as well. Um, 100 tests in a row, and you want to play against, you know, people like Nathan Lyon, who's a fierce competitor. Um, and obviously bowled very well at Edgbaston. Um, and then just to kind of so innocuously just, you know, have that tear and just walking in from the boundary was just, uh, yeah, just a shame. Yeah, I mean you want to play against the best players and he's yeah. one of the best spinners in the world at the minute he's yeah. one of the highest wicket takers of all time for Australia yeah he's right up yeah. there and I think even into the you know probably the top tens of all countries I think he's yeah, yeah. he's right up there for Australia I don't have the stats on me but he is he is right up there yeah I mean it makes this defeat for England even worse considering yeah. they weren't playing one of the better bowler down. bowlers yeah. yeah but if England were to do the impossible and actually win a game. Yeah, it yeah. wouldn't feel it would still feel good, but if Lyon was playing, you'd know you'd be in for a game. But yeah. Well Todd Murphy though, it's fine. Um I mean they still have to bat against Cummins, Hazelwood and Stark. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And they could Ireland be... as well, who was very good in yeah. the game. So... They could be he could easily play four seamers depending on the pitch, and yeah. that's not a fun prospect. Um, right, so Australia batted. We saw the first bit of this innings, uh, which is also fun. Uh, Kawaja, so they were 279 all out, which doesn't really tell the whole story straight away. Um, they started very well with Kawaja and Warner, um, just kind of doggedly keeping England out, which is what I thought they probably would do, just considering no lion. Um, just try to bat as long as they can and get as many as they can. Um, kind of traditional test cricket, you could say. Um, but yeah, Kawaja got 77 again, so you know, continuing some good form. You got to see some Uzi runs. Were you happy to see Uzi runs in person? Yeah, like, yeah, because he's, he's a great lad. I like, him. yeah, like, yeah, and he's proper good as well. Like, some of the shots he's playing is just proper cricket shot, yeah, as opposed he's, he's, to just, other yeah. players <laughs> in this test match. No, he's just a player you want to see you do well, it's just all the kind of eight and sick he's got recently it's been I don't understand um but yeah good yeah. uh Warner 25 um but off 76 so I think it it's it looks nothing but I think it's quite valuable considering how much he doggedly stuck in again the ball did beat the bat a lot um and again could have easily been two or three down quickly but luck of the draw was obviously going to Australia because that's just how things work in cricket if you play better cricket you tend to get the better luck and there we are um, Marnus out for 30. So we, we got to see two wickets live, which is very nice. We got to see Warner and Lavishane out. Um, one to Tongue, one from a rank long hop from Anderson. Um, both are fun. Um, but then it's the next day because, of course, we weren't there. 
uh, day four where things were very odd, um, where England electors used the same tactic. Australia used a short ball tactic, and then Australia also just completely fell into the trap. Um, Broad ended up with four wickets, Tung two, Robinson two, Stokes one after bowling 12 overs on the trot um, and kind of Headingley-esque from not being looking like he can bowl a single over to just having one of those mammoth spell. Um, and then Anson got one. Um, but yeah, it was just that, it, I think, I can't remember the specific stat, but I think it was, was it 95% of deliveries were short or bounced, I think, in the afternoon? Yeah. I, think. I, I heard 90 plus percent, yeah. Yeah, which is balmy. I don't know whether it's fun to watch, um, or interesting to watch. But I mean, it worked. I just, I, I can't. I don't really want the rest of the series just to be like, well, we can't get wickets any other way. We're just going to short stuff. It's, but I guess whatever. <laughs> um, but the, weirdly, the most talking point is probably going to be the last partnership, um, where Nathan Lyon dramatically came into bat. Um, basically on one leg after he had to hop down the um, pavilion steps um, and had to wait in the long room to come to bat because if he had walked from the dressing room, he would have been timed out. And I think that's the level of detail that Australia should be credited for. Yeah. Because, like, who knows if England would have withdrawn their appeal if Lyon would have been timed out. (laughs) Yeah. But I think it's good to just completely negate that Option. Yeah, it's straight there. Yeah, be ready and. I mean, yeah, like... it's it's yeah, I agree. Um, but it's obviously completely Lions' decision. Uh, I think Cummins was a bit more reserved about it. I guess that that sent they weren't. It was it's kind of obvious from how he went off that he was out for the series. But I guess there's a chance that he could aggravate it more, um, by batting. But he just wanted to, you know, um, just contribute what he could while Stark was still there, especially. I think he ended up on putting 15, I think it was. Lion hit four himself. Um, but it's kind of, you know, a showcase to what England have done as well in the previous year in their chasing of, you know, large second innings totals that they wanted as many runs as they could in order to win, um, which is, and again, good kind of game awareness, you know. like it's It also, I think, gave them a bit of momentum, even though it was a weird, it was a very odd 15-run partnership. It didn't, it didn't in the context of stuff. It doesn't look like anything, but that kind of momentum of how Australia would be kind of you know buoyed by the fact that they managed to get runs of, with Lyon basically hopping. Um, but no, it, it was bizarre to watch. Um, Rayan Ahmed did a great little flick on the boundary, which is a personal highlight of the game. <laughs> um, the most we yeah. of him in this series, probably. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, but it was a great moment. Uh, um, and then, yeah, 279 all out, setting England uh, 371 to win. I think that covers mostly, I think, roundabout in that innings, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, they set a difficult score to chase down, but it's a score around about that kind of score that England have chased down before under yeah. McCollum and Stoke. So I thought it should have set up a pretty tight finish. With no lion as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we get onto that last innings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bit going on in this one. Yeah. Um, so England were eventually three hundred and twenty-seven all out. Um, oh, run. one thing from the Go previous on. thing: yeah. uh, thirty-six extras. So England, okay, yeah, do a little bit better. That's good. Yeah, they are improving. But considering we lost by forty-three runs, was it yeah. 36, 72, 70, what, 74 extras? That. Yeah, it's awful. Almost like it changes the game. <laughs> I think there was another wicket of Noble, wasn't there, from Stokes, I'm pretty sure. Um, I mean, probably. There's probably one every inning from England. <laughs> I mean, that's how he got his first wicket as well. And his first, first way, well, it wasn't a wicket in the end, but how he got his debut in Adelaide, I can't remember, it might have been Warner, I think it was, in 2013. It was a Noble, and it was like, oh, good. Um, set the trend. Um so uh, England, 327 all out. Uh, at one stage, they were 45 for four, <laughs> um, which was great. That was fun times. Um, Duckett got 83 and played very well. Um, but otherwise, other than Stokes, no one got over 20, <laughs> um, which is bizarre considering they got 327. Um, so it was based on two guys. And that it's a lot's going to be shrouded by a lot of the stuff we all 
briefly talk about because I can't be bothered. No. Um, <laughs> but um, a lot of it's going to be shrouded by that, and so it's getting one five five, and you know, duck it batting well, but nothing from anyone else. That's I think a concern on on that innings. You know, nothing from Crawley, nothing from Pope, nothing from Root, nothing from Brook, Besto, nothing. Um, I mean, a lot of them are like not very many balls as well like Crawley three off six Pope three yeah. off ten Brooke four off three Robin yeah. sort of one off six like no one's even sticking around no I mean yeah Pope Root and Brooke got very very good balls you could say Crawley is unlucky getting caught down the leg side but I mean Australia better right but I mean it, it is the same Australia are better and they have better bowlers and could exploit more out of the pitch and you know Cummins can produce a world of delivery to get rid of Harry Brook um but should be doing more like you, you can't just rely on two players to try and get you to a target 370 you need at least two free players to get over 50 plus um and it didn't happen um but we'll talk about uh yeah Duckett we mentioned before he's had a very very good game and kind of feels set and again was was caught from a, I don't know if you saw his dismissal on the day five I think um, I have, yeah yeah, where Carey was kind of almost premeditated and moved more towards the leg side beforehand, yeah, yeah. Um, which is a great bit of glove work. You know, there was no signal or anything at all. I think it might have just been instinctive from him. He just moved moved to the right so you could easily catch a top edge when it came. I mean, that's great game awareness. Um, and, you know, Duckett was gone for 83. And at that, that point, Stokes and Duckett were batting very well. That morning had been quite sedate for Australia. It looks quite easy. Um I think they put on well over a hundred in the end, um, but yeah, it, that that almost like that was that felt like a turning point. That it just you know nothing was happening, and then Kerry was able to produce something out of almost nothing. Um, but yeah, duck it back well. Um, uh, ben Stokes, uh, one hundred and fifty five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say out of nowhere, but you you, you get kind of used to it. You got nine sixes. I think I think it's the most in any Ashes innings. I'm pretty sure he has the most sixes by any player across Ashes series now. Um, it was ridiculous. It was. I, I think it's more right to talk about this first than the other stuff because it it almost gets forgotten about bizarrely considering the other stuff. But it was, you know, a bit of a worldy of a knock. It it it, it was very obviously there's similar vibes to that of Headingley. Um, the way he took the bowlers on and just kept on clearing the ropes each time. Um, he was dropped once off Smith, uh, amusingly. Um, but it just looked like one of those days. The difference being that, you know, he had still over 100 more to get rather than just 77 at Headingley, I suppose. And you, you can't really sustain that for that long, I, I shows. But but a great innings nonetheless, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you could see it kind of winding up with him and Duckett partnership yeah. as well like it was just starting to tick you can sense like if we got closer those yeah. would eventually switch on and bang he yeah. just needed one more person to stick yeah. around with him yeah and score I, which i think broad was attempting to do before stokes that i think got out. yeah i but, thought broad batted very well to be honest I yeah mean... i think there was a part of this score which I'm not as happy with Stokes with, as opposed to like the heading Leah one. I think mm-hmm. the rotation of strike when Broad was I agree. with yeah. him. Yeah, was I agree. Or because like Stokes at heading Lee essentially waited until Leach was the final batsman in before yeah. he was hogging the strike. Yeah. But as soon as Broad was in, Stokes was hogging the strike with four ball batsmen left to come. Yeah. Like yeah. when they needed like enough. 155 or something, wasn't it? Exactly. it was, yeah. yeah. Like Broad is a good enough batsman to stick around a bit. He... And I don't think Broad gave away his wicket until Stokes had gone. No. Like Stokes turned down two easy runs when Stokes. Yeah, like, there was on... a lot. Yeah. I, I, I remember talking like, about this. Is not to take anything yeah. away no, of course. from his score. I think I just think he could have managed the rotating of his try. Yeah, Better. I think as well, considering how well Robinson's batted recently-ish, that yeah. you know, he you no, know, he can hold a win. So I, I don't understand why the runs are on offer that they couldn't take them because it's it's such an ask to save the Stokes. You've got to score all of these. I mean, he would, you know, back himself to do it. But it, like you say, Broad is capable enough, and you know, Broad had a bit between his teeth for reasons. Um, so you knew that he was up for it. I I I've, I found it odd. You know, yeah. he and you he could managed, tell by yeah. the end of his. 
innings as well. Like you could tell it was mentally and physically drained on him. So yeah. when he did play that weird sort of hook shot, hooky bully shot, yeah, it was just a tired shot because he, yeah. again, I think Australia negated the amount of runs England wanted. They could tell Stoke didn't want those singles. Yeah, and just let England play in that way. They yeah. tried up the runs completely until they always forced Stokes to go for the big shot. And by that yeah. time, he was knackered. So yeah. of course he was going to play a bit of a crap shot at that point. Yeah. yeah. As, he did, as he did at Headingley as well, to be honest, he was dropped at Headingley. Yeah. And there was obviously moments of madness at Headingley as well. But, you know, I think Australia did negate. They, it's almost like we, we've seen this film before. Um, <laughs> we're going to... They had obvious other tactics. They bowled wider. They bowled, you know... He was obviously looking in the arc to mid wicket and long on rather than over cover or anything. Um, so they negated that. Um, I don't everyone think he was out. Any boundaries on the offside? I think, or well, they all call, came on the left. Or not on day five? No, I, I think yeah. pretty sure he got a cover drive or something the day before. It might have been. I can't remember the back move. Apologies, I might be rem- misremembering the highlights. But yeah, definitely day five. I, all I remember was just that short boundary on the leg side. Just. It seemed like every ball, especially that over against green where it's just six, six, six. Mm-hmm. Um, it was nonsense. But it's it was brilliant to watch um whilst it lasted. And it just, you know, you felt that oh he cannot do it again. And <laughs> it's not allowed. <laughs> he didn't, but it had everything like this is like part two of this same film. Like he bowled the mammoth spell the day before, he had batted through to overnight, he'd been lost losing partners. He's like, Well, screw it, I'll do it then. Um, and you know, like, like you say, it's nothing to take away. I think he could rotate the strike more. I think he's it wasn't the same situation as Leach, but um, yeah, kind of result, out of nowhere. The result is not off the back of Stokes not rotating strike, like as no. badly as England yeah. played, of if, course, it is. Yeah, no, if, yeah, like Crawley had stuck around with Duckett for a little bit longer, if yeah, it's Pope completely didn't different. Didn't dislocate his shoulder even worse when he was yeah. <laughs> or you know, yeah, could got 10. Yeah, <laughs> it would have. Been a lot exactly and a nice takeaway from this is that you know stokes is still obviously worldly which people were doubting for some reason <laughs> i mean we haven't said anything about the thing but i'm guessing we're about to uh... um right yeah so just to round everything up stokes plays a worldy uh tong got a nice 19 at the end which i think will get forgotten but it was a lovely 19 <laughs> um what was it the third highest score of the inning yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That says it all. Yeah, I know exactly. It's nonsense. Um, and yeah, Stark got three. Upper Stark had a great game. Uh, come in three, Hazelwood three. You know your powerhouses. Um, when you've got no no spinner, they all stepped up. Um, as you'd expect, they would. Um, I didn't expect that even with line as well. Like, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. It's um, such a good attack that none of them need to get five with it. Exactly. Get a- Two or three, it followed. Yeah. Job done. Um but yeah, enough about the cricket chat. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> you can follow well, I... that's just not cricket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's briefly dabble into the painstakingly stuff that's gonna just go on for months and months and months. Um there's two instances, one's now been forgotten because another thing happened. Um, Duckett on day four was caught by Mitchell Stark at fine leg. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, but was given not out because quite rightly, he had pressed the ball into the turf to steady himself. So he obviously didn't have control of the ball. Um, Australia were a bit angsty about that on day four, but funny enough, forgotten by about it by the end of day five. Um, but yeah, not out. Just Is that fair? Is that a very easy, quick one? Not out? Yeah, I mean, the ball had been grounded. I think Nerea Erasmus, who's on third umpire, came out and said uh, something about how his body wasn't in control mm-hmm. as well. Like, if he was closer to the boundary, yeah. and he'd have hit the yeah, boundary. and he'd used his hands been... to stop himself as well, hadn't he? Which had the ball in, which, you know, is, it's, it's not I, out. But... Yeah. Like, it is, it I, is I, annoying because there's, he... Yeah. There's no problem with it. It's not out. It was backed up by the laws of the game. Move yeah. on. Yeah, I agree. Which, which is my opinion for the next one as well. <laughs> I don't understand the controversy behind either of the decisions. 
fucking stupid. I <laughs> cricket is so stupid. Like the only reason Australia were missed by that is because it didn't go their way. And the same with England, yeah. it didn't go their yeah. way. So they're annoyed. And England are yeah. not annoyed now because they lost and they were <laughs> shouldn't be annoyed by that because they were shit in this game. Is that yeah, they didn't lose this game through the Honestly. you know, stumping, if you want to call it, of Carey. Um or run out, who cares? I'm glad um, it was stumping actually because yeah. Extra stats. Because <laughs> um, it's all on motion, wasn't it? Um, they didn't lose it because of that decision. Um, instead, like, at the time, I remember watching it annoyed, but that's just because of my faculty silly way of viewing cricket in my English pommy way, being like, oh, but but traditions, it's nonsense, it's rubbish, it doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> he's out by the laws of the game, that's it. But I mean, my my experience is that I I was involved in a very villagey thing like this. <laughs> I shall take you back to 2015. I had just graduated university, if you can remember that time. Um, and I'd come back to play a couple of games, and um, you know, it's not like an ashes test. Um, but I felt like I was batting okay. I was, you know, rocketing along on something probably like eight. Um <laughs> and um so not, so not that far off what johnny was no exactly <laughs> let's say let's say 10 as well i definitely got a boundary as well so i'm basically the same um yeah i've done a play and miss um which had gone through to the keeper um and i was annoyed because it was one i could have easily got um so i practiced a shot again um after all the fields had clapped at me like yeah good over lad well done good over um and the umpires are moved um and then there's a rattle when the I had obviously stepped out of the crease to practice the shot um, and was given out. Um, I was livid <laughs> um, at the time at the bloke, um, but on reflection more so with myself because it's just dozy laziness. Um, but I guess I can un- I can very much understand and relate to the annoyance and outrage and stuff because it's like, well, for me, it's, grim and looks a bit rubbish and then like but in my mind i aesthetically want cricket to be like oh caught behind normal but um that's not for me to say that's that's how the game should be played it's just how i would like the game to be seen australia did the same it's in the laws they've got the wicket he's out he is out it's not like is it it's, it's not like they are cheating they were if, if it was cheating he wouldn't have been given out he's out off he goes and it's I don't love it, but it's that's it. <laughs> I mean, I there's not much more to add. It's just a mm-hmm. wicket. Exactly. I yeah. Don't understand all this nonsense about the spirit of the game. Like, exactly. surely the laws of the game are there to prevent the spirit of the game from being exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. if England had done that, which Bethel had tried to do, albeit in a slightly different circumstances, to Labuschagne. England would have, like, yeah, yeah, removed their appeal. I think McCullum's done that to Collingwood before, and Vittori did yeah. remove his appeal. Yeah. But like I've seen Collingwood say, like he would have deserved to have been out for that. Yeah, and then Collingwood didn't it's recall it. someone Honestly, named. Like, Who cares? It's just a- Wicket is nothing wrong with it. I can understand the batsman and the team being pissed off at it. Yeah. But like you said about yourself, you're more annoyed at yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's where the angers come from. It's exactly. you're not actually yeah. angry at the bowler or the wicket keeper. You're yeah. You're angry. You've given yourself. them the chance to do that. Exactly. You're like manifesting your annoyance onto that yeah. other person. Yeah. But yeah. have then like inwardly oh wait, I fucked up. Yeah. I don't even think you or Bertho or Collingwood in that instance. <laughs> I am in the same three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I think there was one last year with the Grand Dame when Pope did it from Slip. I think That's yeah. What I've got in my I, I can't, I'm pretty but, sure. I think the Grand Dame went for a maybe went for a run. I think I can't remember. I vague. I have vague recollection, but yeah. I, I think in all cases, Batman's not really done anything wrong. Yeah. So they feel aggrieved. Because it's yeah, an unconventional yeah. wicket. Yeah, but bowler's done nothing wrong. He's bowled a good enough delivery for it to miss the bat, miss 
for that minute not score run. Keith yeah. is instinctively throwing the ball. It's not like he's like paused to wait for the batsman to get out. Yeah. Which I think folks actually kind of did for a stumping against Valverde. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Again, I do, I have nothing wrong with what folks folks did because yeah. that's smart. I think every it's the laws, isn't it? Yeah. Every instance, it's just sharp wicket keeping. Move yeah. on. I'm done with it. It's a wicket. <laughs> I'm fed up with this talk. I'm also hate. The last thing I hate. No, is no, no. This... We're done. We're done. We're no, done. I'm <laughs> hating this. I hate the chat around dead ball and live ball. All but I just think that's just annoying grimness. Like who? Like who cares? Like just I. No. Oh. Yep, yeah, I, I agree. Okay, annoyed. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Um, but I mean, it led on to all this other mad stuff. Like, obviously, I I have no problem with the crowd then using that as pantomime villains for Australia. I think you know it'd be exactly the same if it's in Australia. I think having a go at the crowd is nonsense. Um, I think it adds to the theatre of it all. I think if anything, it probably spurred Stokes on a bit. I'd imagine. Um. You'd have thought it definitely spurred broad on. Um, I did love that content. I will be honest. I, I'm happy we got yeah. that from the stumping. I'm, I'm, I probably enjoyed that content from broad as much as I enjoyed Stokes' innings. <laughs> um, I thought it was great because I, I can understand people being annoyed by it and stuff. But yeah, move on. Um, but the, just the outcry is still. I could guarantee if I went on on the interwebs now, it would still be rolling on. It's still on Reddit. It, it's still post about I, it. It's, it's, it's out move on like if you know, i'd understand if you know if kerry had barged pairs out of his stumps and then stumped him it's like that's different but it's annoying but yeah then you have all the mcc nonsense which i think is nonsense um i don't know have you seen the names of the people three people the three individuals who were suspended um following their um grievances with Usman Khawaja and David Warren. I haven't, but I would like hesitate giving their names like Okay. Like airtime. I don't think but okay. I'll tell you about it in per- in person. Yeah. Or, I think uh, yeah. yeah, if they've got funny names and fine, but I don't think we should be giving these people No, of course not. Um, and then quite rightly that they're suspended. That's the thing. Like yeah. you and because it was targeted at Ozzy Kawaja, yeah. again, one of the nicest blokes yeah. in the cricket. Yeah. You're... It's implied that there was some sort of racial stuff there. But he's the only... Know, but, yeah. What? Yeah. That's yeah. what yeah. you're drawn to because of just the sort of crowd that you expect from the MCC in that yeah. Yeah. area because I think I'm pretty sure Ozzy is the only ethnic minority in the Australian 11 yeah yeah like there was a bit from Robinson in the last test which I think again it's just conjecture but like given Robinson's history with his tweets I think there is potentially some racial undertones I don't think it was necessarily meant or but I think like the fact that it goes back to a report isn't it you know that it's I think there's a high probability that's what occurred because okay. why else would Kawaja bring a steward over to single these people out? Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's, it's abhorrent. Um, but it's and this it's has come after the ECB the were... report exactly. Like this, <laughs> this is the thing. Like the the one one thing that really wound me up. It's not the freaking bear stove stumping and stuff. Who cares? Um, but it's yeah, like the outcry. But then some of the you know, crass comments afterwards, like when in relation to the Lord's crowd on day five, being like, I've heard from so many pundits and so many people like, oh, it's not a typical Lord's crowd. Oh, a day a Sunday crowd at Lord's is always different. There's always a different vibe about it. You're just, the report literally last week called cricket, you know, entrenched in racism, sexism, and probably most importantly here, elitism. You're saying that if you had had a traditional crowd that had paid £160 to go and watch this um, day five, that they that they wouldn't be booing? No, of course not, because they paid £160. They're, they're better. No, like, not, the, not the members in the long room that were booing. Exactly, then you had the, the members in the long room. So I don't understand. Like, people know who the pundits are, so I'm not going to name them as either. But cough, if they cough, can't... Cough. <laughs> I'll name them. Fuck them. Cough, Agnew, cough. Um, like, you can't have these people 
say it's not you can, the, to use the undertone comment say this is not a typical lords crowd or a sunday crowd that lords is always different you cannot say that of the undertone to be like oh the cheap tickets the cheap spectators the common folk if you want the riff-raff. and then you have the riffraff and then you have friggin these three idiots of the mcc get suspended for obviously verbally abusing australian players like i don't I just it just that that angers me more than anything else out of this game. Like the hypocrisy that you have a report last week to say cricket is entrenched with elitism, and then you have response response uh, responses like that from you know high up pundits, and I think it's really crap. That's my that's my whinge. I don't care if Bairstow's run out. That's my annoyance. You can't you can't have these pundits for five days react to this report and say. How are we going to tackle elitism or racism and stuff in cricket? And then you get to day five and it's like, oh, it's not a normal crowd, is it? It's like, I hate it. <laughs> it was kind of, it was always a little bit awkward that after that report came out, it was the next match was being held at yeah. possibly the most elitist and classic yeah. yeah. ground in the entirety of sport. Yeah, I just can't think of another stadium that comes even close to in any sport up its own arseness. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like they what they banned the Barmy Army. You're not allowed to wear like, not allowed trumpet, not allowed flags. Hats. Yeah, fancy dress. Just stupid. But you can bring in as much alcohol as you want. It's fine. Um, I wonder why they were booing and shouting obscenities at the Australians then. I just, yeah, that it was just that. So that was my piece. That's what annoys me most. Not if Bessos wanders out this crease. And I think that's more of an important topic to say that. You can't have people fight a cause and say, "Let's ha- let's ha- how are we going to tackle this report?" And then five days later, disregard it in a flippant comment. Obviously, they don't, they're not going out to say like that, but you know the undertones are exactly that. Oh, like right, it's... from Agnew and Chirales, who were like definitely from a bit more of an upper class. Yeah, oh, good the Sunday crowd is always different. I hate it. Anyway, um, that's the cricket chat done. Um, So we then move on to Headingley, which will be starting in um, a couple of days' time from when we are recording. Um, As I think we've already briefly mentioned what's going to (laughs) happen. Pope is not going to play. Lawrence will be in. England have changed their squad. Lawrence about three. Um, That's pretty much all we need to know. Todd Murphy probably comes straight in for um, uh, Nathan Lyon. Um, The uh, women's Test series, so the women's not test series, the women's ashes should be more tests. That was a slip. Um, so the women's ashes is ongoing. They lost to Australia in a good game uh, at Edgerton on Saturday. Um, it went down to the last over, but Australia did Australia and um made it across the line. But it does now mean that England now have to win all the remaining fixtures in order to regain the ashes, which is going to be a big old. Um, tough ask, but um, in terms of the, there was almost twenty thousand people at Edgerton on Saturday, which is great. Um, I'm pretty sure there is a game at Southampton in the GS Bowl, which is sold out, um, which is brilliant. Um, and the next game is tomorrow, uh, the second T Twenty at the Oval. Um, so yeah, still all to play for, but it's yeah, it's it's looking very good for Australia there as well. Yeah, well, um, like yeah, I don't think Dunkley played that well in the test match, but she was well good. Yeah, yeah. like I was watching the Amy Jones not mm-hmm. live. I think I got it was Saturday, right? So that was the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I managed to get back in time to watch Amy Jones have a bit of a yeah. match. Yeah, like I think all the Aussie batters did really well. Yeah. Like it's it could have been a lot different because I, I think England yeah. were 100 odd for seven at one stage, weren't they? 120 for seven. And obviously, Amy Jones came in and gave a bit of momentum. But otherwise, it's it's the same old people. We've got Beth Mooney, Tally McGrath, Ash Gardner uh, doing the job for Australia, which is what you expect. Yeah. I, I think England, if they'd have got Mooney in that like spell where they got yeah. three quick wickets, because they, McGrath and Gardner were big ones. Yeah. But if you could have just gotten that. One big makes difference, yeah. But I mean, it took it right to the wire, like considering how close the test and this T20 have been, 
yeah. think England are starting to edge a bit more towards Australia. And if anything, getting to play Australia as often as England do. It's only good for them, yeah. Exactly. You're playing better opposition, you're only going to improve from that. Yeah. So I wouldn't say obviously they want to win the rest of the games, but I don't think that's as important for England as opposed to improving as much as you can. Yeah. Because it's that long term thing. Because like Australia is just by far and away the best team in the world. Yeah. So yeah. the more chances you get to play them, you're just gonna improve more. Right? For sure. Yeah. yeah. Would agree definitely with that. Um that said we're so, gonna yeah. smash them. We're gonna absolutely <laughs> Yeah, gonna yeah. win all the reigning games. But yeah, must win tomorrow. I mean it's all in Australia's hands, but yeah, like you say, England are starting to hit strides a bit and they do look good. They are competitive. They are taking it down to the wire. So fingers crossed. Um, But yeah, otherwise, that is it for Ash's chat. Um, Other outside cricket news, West Indies are out of the World Cup. They're not good. They haven't qualified, um, which is disastrous. Um, uh, Sri Lanka have qualified and it looks like it's going to be between Scotland and Zimbabwe who gets the second spot. Um, Scotland need to win both of their remaining games. They're currently playing Zimbabwe. We don't know the result of that yet, but it looks close. <laughs> um, and uh, England's fixtures for 2024 have been released. Um, a, a quick brief summary for you, Jamie. I don't know if you've seen them, um, but there's no women's test. Um, and there are six white ball games for England men versus Australia in September. Why? Exactly. Um, so... Wait, in 2024? <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> uh, not even off the oh, fuck. No. So, yeah, a lot of old rubbish. Um, but on we go. Uh, we'll be back next time. <laughs> Title of the episode, load of old rubbish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll be back with the Headingley review when England could have lost the Ashes in the three games or they could have had a dramatic comeback. Uh, Ollie Pope won't be there. Nathan Lyon won't be there. Um, but we will in audio form. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that that's all from us. You can find us in many places. Where where are those places? Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Not Apple Music. That's <laughs> music, obviously. Um, I think that's never ones. Yeah, other places maybe. Yeah, wherever, if you're listening. The, wherever the podcast automatically uploads yeah. to. There. I mean, probably most likely if you've got to hear, you know that we're on those places because you've listened to this bit. But yeah, we've not thought about that before. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, but yeah, we'll be back next week probably. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully Mason Mount will have signed for United by this, but whatever. That's not. Really yeah, right. and we hopefully will have a Jamie cricket match review. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Look forward to that. Yeah. Okay, well, see you later. Ashes. Lol. <laughs> I think we should just keep doing that outro. Yeah, that's our outro every time. Yeah, yeah. We found our outro, which is good to know. <laughs> <laughs>